And joining me from Kyiv is Kira Rudik, a member of Ukraine's parliament and leader of the Holos Party. Um, Kira, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope that you are uh, staying safe as, as much as possible. Um, could you give us a sense of what is happening in the capital? Uh, are Russian soldiers there or mercenaries? Uh, we hear there are air raids. Tell us what your day has been like. So, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I should be safe right now. And um, if I hear the siren, I will let you know. So, today there was the first attempt of the peace negotiation with Putin. As we anticipated, it didn't go well, uh, because less than after an hour of this uh, peace negotiation ended, and both sides went back to discuss it with their parliament, uh, the most vicious and uh, most aggressive uh, air force attack started on Kiev and the nearby cities. So. Uh, this proves uh, the thing that we have known and have been telling the world for a while, that Putin's word means less than the price of the paper that it is written at. Because the most hurting thing that is happening to Ukrainian cities right now is the Air Force attacks. And it looks exactly like in Israel or somewhere where it has been an ongoing war. Uh, you hear the siren, then you hear the... Uh, shooting and then the shelling of the uh, city. Uh, and then after it, when you're sitting in the uh, bomb shelter along with your family, then Russian troops are trying to get to the city while everybody is scared. The, it's not like you would imagine watching the movies from Second World War where the troops are marching through the central square, right? It is a smaller groups of two or three people, sometimes five, they are armed, they look pretty normal, and they're getting into the city to destabilize the situation. That's wow. why the city needs uh, the um, resistance crews like, like I have assembled and many other people have assembled, who are armed and who are able to go and check what's going on, because our army cannot like close all the small doors that the entrances to the city look like. And, and tell me, <laughs> tell me, Kier, are these Russian soldiers that you say are roaming uh, the streets of your city, are they targeting civilians? No, they are going, they are getting in because they need to establish a corridor inside the city. So it needs to be enough of them inside the city so they could form the corridor uh, uh, so the Russian tanks could get in. This is their plan. And they have been trying to do this for the last five days. They are not attacking civilians just yet. However, Russian rockets are destroying the uh, just uh, the, uh, the areas, uh, the living areas. And you have probably seen the picture of a 24-story building where the rocket hit on the side, and it was like Godzilla had a bite on it. And it's terrible and it's terrifying uh, because. Uh, like there is no limits to what Putin would do, and we, as a country who has been at war with him for eight years, we know that for hundred percent. You so you, now there is no mercenaries or like soldiers in the city, but this has uh, happened didn't happen like uh, magically itself. It's the result of the constant resistance of um, Ukrainian people who bore arms and who are right now protecting their cities. Just people like you. So, so you were given a Kalashnikov, a machine gun, last week. Um, I don't think you're a trained soldier. How are you going? You say that you're part of a resistance group. So, so tell us how this is working, how you, you go on the street with your gun. What motivated you, and, and how, are you, how are you doing this? So first of all, um, I uh, received the gun. It was the first time in my life where I was even holding a gun, like on Friday. And since that time, I've been training myself to use it. And not only myself, but the whole crew. As a leader of a political party, I put, put assembled a resistance group containing people from my party and members of parliament and soldiers who served in the Russian-Ukrainian war on the east. So the soldiers are training us. At night, they are going patrolling. And we are getting ready to protect and defend the home that we are in right now. And uh, they are supporting our army when there are some calls saying, oh, guys, go check on this and that. 
I haven't fired these arms except for training, and I hope that I will never have to. But I need to know that I will be ready to protect my family, my house, my city, and my country. It's very simple, and I'm very glad that right now I'm able to do so, that I am given this opportunity. So we, we, we are hearing that, that Russian soldiers have surrounded your city, the capital, on all sides. Is, first of all, is that what you're seeing? And we're also hearing, and you tell me, that supplies are short. Uh, are residents getting food? Uh, are weapons getting through? Are, are ammunition getting through? What are you seeing when you go out there? So, first of all, yeah, this is the goal of Russians, to surround the city and perform a siege. Right now, as most of the things that they do, it didn't, uh, was not completed very well. So there are, uh, there are ways to get the food in and out and good, get the ammunition. However, we understand that at some point, once they bring in more forces, they will create a siege and they will uh, try to create a humanitarian cat catastrophe inside the city. This would be not new tactics. This is what they have done uh, beforehand in other countries that they were trying to conquer. So um, we, we are getting ready to that. And uh, right now, you, the supermarkets mostly are closed, but you still can get the food, and there are some humanitarian missions already in the city. So, and also the, the Russian president has put, it, put his nuclear arsenal on high alert. Um, do you, you say you know um, how this president thinks? Do you think this is bluff? Are you worried? about this at all is it there's a lot of is there a lot of talk with your you know with your group of 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 people about that so we all need to understand one thing as the leaders of the world putin is crazy and he is unpredictable if you would like uh, a week before the war began i have been at munich security conference where kamala harris and many many other uh, important world leaders were present. And nobody, nobody would tell you that the risks of Putin starting full-scale war was more than 10%. And he started it. Why? Because he's crazy. Though we already see that it was a bad decision for him. He had been severely sanctioned. Uh, he, his opposition is growing stronger. And he has not g uh, get any wins in Ukraine that he could be proud of or explain to his people why, why, what is this all for. So would he shoot a nuclear weapon? Nobody knows. The chances are very low right now because it will get him to nothing. But this, again, brings up a, a separate question on the world security order and how to deal in situation like this when there is a crazy dictator, uh, I would say uh, Kim Jong in level crazy, uh, who can, uh, who can uh, fire a nuclear weapon. I, I, you know, your president just signed a request to become an immediate member of the European Union. How would that benefit your country? And why would he be doing that now? So, you know, with European Union and NATO and other organizations, we as Ukraine, we always thought that it's, it was a good idea to, to take it gradually, to allow the country to reform so it will be like, you know, all, all by the rules. However, what we have seen right now after the war started, it's either you at the table or you are not. So we are right now seeing that we are, uh, work as a shield for Europe, as a shield for Poland, for Czechs, for, for Baltic countries, for every, every other country who uh, would then have to fight the Russia themselves. And if we fail, uh, there will be no European Union because uh, Putin was very adamant about which countries he will take next because he is just like Hitler, but without the mustache. So that's why we think that right now is a good time to make these decisions that were there for a while, but nobody, but everybody was say, were saying, oh, let's wait. For us to be able to win this war, we need many, many things, including trading things and military things that only a membership in, United, in EU and NATO provide. And we know that it's a tough decision for European countries to, to have NATO fight for us. But this is inevitable decision. 
Otherwise, Ukraine will fail, and then then the next the, the other countries will fail, and it will be like just like with sanctions when everybody agrees that they were super necessary and we are super thankful. However, they were too late, because if the sanctions would have happened like a week before, then maybe right now we would have a different situation. Kira Ruddick, I know you're in a very difficult situation, so I thank you for talking to us and for taking the time. Uh, I know when we tried to talk to you earlier, there were air raids and you had to go uh, into the basement. So thank you. Uh, thank you for this. That was thank Kira Ruddick, a member of Ukraine's parliament and leader of the Holos party. She spoke to us from Kiev. Thank you.